Hi, my name is Isbun and um, welcome to this uh, very short introduction to um, what you can do with Google Maps. Google Maps um, is often underestimated because uh, just Google again, but matter of fact Google Maps in my experience is a very useful tool especially if you're going to collaborate with people who uh, are not full-time users of uh, Geodata then they can easily generate the information that they want such as points um, biologists where have they collected their samples and then we can work from there or historians where have they this or that found so uh, I have very often used uh, Google Maps as a way of making people who are not literate in geodata generate geodata in a easy and flexible way and then using that geodata to work on with so uh, let's see what we can do first of all Google Maps looks something like this and um, this is not really worth much it's a fine map and you can do things with it but nah because as you can see here I'm not signed in so first of all you need to sign in and uh, you can uh, use sign in with your Google account or you can create a new account if you haven't got one and enter all your information and uh, once you create your account you're ready to go I have created an account and I have a web browser running with it here so in this one you can see I am logged in it's my name up here and my little logo so this one is logged in it also knows exactly where I am you see here um, the, the scary bit isn't it that um, they know where you are but anyway so this is the one that is logged in what we can do here is in this menu part here we can click on it and we can go down and say my maps so this is where we can store data and create our own maps so we'll click on my maps and uh, we have my, some of my latest used maps and we also got this one create a new map so I'll uh, do that and uh, we are now ready to uh, to start working um, we can import data uh, I will show you that in a moment or we can create points and uh, and line data we can also have routes but these are the ones that we'll be using now so I'll just start out by um, zooming in a bit to uh, the area where I live Uh, yeah, something like this. So I can um, now start drawing. I can place a point. See, this is approximately where I live. There, um, home, and save that point. Fine, close it. I can draw a line, and I can now draw a straight line across a field or whatever. Or I can use a route. I can click on a route and say, okay, I want to create a route from here and I want to go, let's say, down this way and uh, don't want to go that way, don't want to go that way. Uh, let's see if I just, yeah, I could make it around the screen there. Um, so I'm basically just, oh, see, at this point it says, ah, it's much quicker to go that way. So I want to force it, so I'll just click once here, and then I'll continue my route here. Uh, so, I oh, don't want to go up there. And back to my starting place. Almost at least. So, I now created a um, some points 
and a simple little route. And uh, oh, we could uh, you know this for, for make a straight line uh, in somewhere uh, up here. If we go back to my layer and uh, add a straight line from there to there. Call it test or something silly. So you should never call things like. Good. So I uh, now have um, two layers in my map, untitled map, my, my untitled layer here, which was my pointer, and then a driving direction. So, um, this is all fun. I can save it and uh, watch it and send it to people, but I can do more than that. Because what I can do if I click on these menus up here at the map level, so this is the top, this is, these belongs to this layer and these are menu things for that layer, menu options, but this one is map options and I can then go down and say export my map and I will export it as not a um, KMZ what it will do normally but I'll see, I'll force it to export as a KML KML is basically, yeah, KMZ is a um, zipped directory including a KML which means that they can include icons and things like that I don't want that because I want to lo load it into QGIS in a moment so I'll just say I want just to save it as the KML without those extra things on it and say download so and it has now downloaded it and if I now switch to my download folder here you can see my untitled map there and I can find QGIS which is here and I can then drag my untitled map onto QGIS. QGIS says oh look there's lots of things in it. Um, there is for the two layers and the, so there you see I've got layer one here my untitled layer and my direction layer. I just want all of it so I just select it and say OK and you can see now I have my Line, test line, I have my point, I have my driving direction and I have my driving route. So now it's into something that can start we can start doing advanced things with. So for instance we could go and see hmm wonder if these roads existed a hundred years ago. So I will uh, load up a VMS map with, um, from our from the uh, web map services from uh, our university, and say a topographical map of Denmark, and uh, just make this one a bit wider so I can see which ones, and I want those from just about 1900, and I'll say add, and close this window. And uh, now we can see, I just want this one as the lowest layer. You can see my wrap map route might be difficult to see. Um, I just make this full screen and uh, change the color of this to something a bit more bright red, perhaps a bit wider. There. And let's see what happened now. Here we have our route in a nice big red color it's connecting to our server and we can now see how this route matches up with the original topographical map from uh, just around 1900 so Google map I can use it to quickly generate some um, points lines I can uh, draw them freehand or I can generate them as uh, routes on roads and that I can then export, save it as a KML file and load that into um, a software such as um, QGIS. But I can do more than that. I can also go the other way around. So I'll just say, uh, now nah, this map here, I'll delete it and say that. And uh, create a new map. Because I can also go the other way around. <coughs> I, I can import 
data into um, Google Maps. So I have already got two, go see there, got two uh, data files. I have a file of earthquakes as a CSV file, so that's where do we have measurements of earthquakes. And I have a um, little file in Excel spreadsheet with addresses in it. And I want to uh, add these to my map. So I can press import. And I can go and drag, I'll start with this one, which is an address file. I can, uh, I can show you first. So you can see here, I have an address column. This is where I live. This is where I work, home, work. And then I can take, save, nah. I can take this one and drag it there. And say, okay, what should we use to find it? Well, you're going to use um, address. And what's going to decide this type of symbols? Well, we all use what. And say finish. And you will see that. It's now spinning because it's working, it's doing geocoding. So it's like finding out where are those addresses. They're not coordinates, they are just addresses. And it has finished. And hopefully we can see that we have one point here, which is the university. And uh, we have uh, another point over here where I live. So we have our data set loaded in and um, <coughs> we could use that for to get it back into uh, QGIS or something like it so if you have lots of firms or other information where you have addresses then you can um, load it in and get it georeferenced this way without having to do to georeferencing can sometimes be a bit of a hassle so this is uh, a very nice and simple way of doing it if uh, we all um, try adding a new layer, so I'll say add new layer, and I will now try and import the other spreadsheet. The other spreadsheet is a CSV file, so comma separated, and it has to be commas. Um, no semicolons for your Danes, where we by default use semicolon as a separator. We will have to use the comma. So this is with commas, and I'll just load them in. And um, this time it looks as oh, it looks like there's a column called latitude. We'll use that for latitude. There's one called longitude. We'll use that for longitude. That's fine. And I want it to use a uh, place to generate my symbols. Finished. Okay. It starts now creating a marker at each of the last, I think, as far as I remember, it's 50 uh, earthquake observations um, downloaded from the earthquake observation server. So here we have a nice map with, uh, with um, earthquakes. I don't know why I didn't give them the nice colors depending on their place, but let's ask it to do that. Fine, do we want the label? Yeah. We want um, to label them for the magnitude. So, good, thank you. So now we have our map of earthquakes and their related magnitude. So that is a um, quite simple way of getting data from in this case, loading data in from a spreadsheet with other addresses as I did with my home and my work or with um, latitude and longitude coordinates as I did with these further off we can go in and ask it to uh, sorry um, go in here and we can change them and we can do all odds and ends uh, that we would like to do on this data set what I wanted to show on this one a open table so here we have the spreadsheet, here you can see my original, my latitude and longitude as decimal latitude and longitude, we can't, it doesn't work with uh, 
latitude and longitude as degrees, minutes and seconds. It has to be decimal, but you can see this is my spreadsheet. And if I find that, oh, this one was an interesting one. You can also see that it also has highlighted where this earthquake is and gives me the details of it also. So, all in all, don't underestimate the usefulness of uh, Google Maps. It can be used for visualizing spreadsheet data easily and it can be used for geocoding if you only have addresses and you want to have them translated to something you can put into a map. It can be used once you have these things. They can then be exported as KML. Let's go up and say export KML. Save it to a file. If you want to load it into QGIS or a map, it's best to keep them as KMLs. Download it and once there, you can go back to your application. Just give me a no, give me a nice blank one. Find my download folder. Drag it into QGIS. And hey presto, I have my data. So that was that for my very short introduction to how we can use Google Maps. Bye!